Hello Kindergarten, welcome back to another art class. Last time I saw you, we were talking about how basic shapes can be put together to make a work of art. How rectangles, circles, triangles, and other shapes can be used to build just about anything. Now, besides shapes, there's one more important type of thing an artist can use to add more detail and more uh, things to our drawings, and that is line. Now there's a lot of different types of line, and a lot of different ways you can draw those lines, but it's really easy. So when I think of lines, uh, first you gotta think about what direction are those lines gonna go? Are they gonna go up and down? We call that vertical. Can all of you say vertical? Another kind of line is a line that goes left and right. We call that horizontal. Can all of you say horizontal? Say it one more time. Horizontal. Good. How about one that's crooked, a line that goes from one corner to the other corner. We call that diagonal. Can all of you say diagonal? Diagonal. So that's the direction a line can go, either up and down, left and right, or from corner to corner, like a crooked line. Now, those are the directions, but there's also different styles, different kinds of lines that we can do. So let's think of some. Now, I think we just did one type. One kind of line is a straight line, right? It's flat, it's straight. Can any of you think of another kind of line that we can make? Think of the ocean. What kind of line do you think of when you think of the ocean? How about a wavy line? This goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And if we're still thinking about water, this might be like calm ocean, but if the water gets really rough, it might look more like this, where it's pointed on top. Almost like a letter W that keeps on going. Can you think of any other line types? There's one I'm thinking of, it begins with the letter Z. How about a zigzag? Kind of looks like the letter Z or an N, but it turns sideways. It's kind of like a letter Z, right? Only this letter, capital letter N, or sideways Z, just keeps on going. That is what we call a zigzag. Now look at the wavy line and the zigzag line. They both go up and down, but what's different about them? Notice how this one's rounded on top and bottom, and this one comes to a point. So you gotta make sure you go stop at the top and then go down, up down, up, down. There are straight lines in between, but they stop at the top. What other kinds of lines could we make? Think of the road. You ever seen a dashed line in, your, in the road? How about a dotted line? It's still a line. And then there's some more interesting lines that we could try. How about uh, a castle? Can you picture the top of a castle? Usually it has these crenellations at the top. I know that's a fancy word, crenellation, but that is what you call this pattern that's at the top of a castle. I like to call that the castle line. If you can think of some other lines, you are more than welcome to use any line that you can think of in your picture. Ooh, I just thought of another one. How about a curly line? That's another good one. 
In fact, I think that might work really good for our picture. Let me show you where we can add those kinds of lines to our picture of our rocket ship. I want to tell you how we're going to add the jets, the rockets that shoot out the bottom of our rocket ship. And we're going to do that with lines. That's why I call this project Rocket Lines. So I want you to think of all those different styles of lines that we did and pick a few and you're going to draw them coming out the bottom. So maybe I'll do a, uh, a curly Q line or a swirly line. And I like to mirror it on the other side. That means to do the same thing, but opposite on the other side. Maybe I'll have a zigzag line next. I like this because it looks like smoke and this looks like fire. Maybe I can have some, hmm, how about a wavy line coming out of this one? Ooh, I think that would look good. And just to keep trying different lines, how about a pointed wavy line too? I'll go the opposite direction, I'll point this way. And then maybe just a couple dashed lines going down the center. I want you to use several different kinds of lines to add the fire and smoke coming out of the bottom of your rocket ship. Then, if you want to add more detail, lines are great for that. So let's say on my rocket ship here, here, let me turn it sideways. Sometimes turning your paper can help you when you're drawing. I want to draw maybe some extra details here. Maybe I'll add some lines here. Just to make it look like there's some more parts to my rocket ship. And you could do straight lines. Sometimes it's kind of fun to do curved lines too. It makes it look more rounded. You can kind of see the difference between those two. Maybe I'll add some uh, castle lines here. Just to make it look like there's different parts of my spaceship. Sometimes adding these lines can make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so go ahead and experiment, adding some lines, stripes, and details to your ship. Add some lines coming out of the bottom of your rocket. And once you're done with that, let's talk about how to color this. All right, so I wanna give you some pointers on how to color. Now, I know a lot of you are great at coloring already, but there are some things you might not know. Let's talk about, hmm, what color do I wanna do for my rocket? Let's do, let's do purple. I like purple. So, if you have one of these kind of markers at home, and I'm sure most of you do, there's something I want you to look at. Look at the tip of this marker here. Let me see if I can get it to focus. See how the tip of that marker kind of looks like a triangle? Did you know that there are two ways to color with this marker? It all depends on how you hold it. If you just use the tip of your marker, you'll get a thin line. If you turn your marker, here, let me hold it right here. If you turn your marker from the tip to the side, so instead of having your marker straight up and down, if you turn it on its side, you can get a thick line. Ooh, look how thick that is. Now, when you're drawing on just on top of your lines, let's say I want to draw on top of this line right here. The tip of my marker might be really good for that, but if I want to color in a big area, maybe this uh, triangle spot right here, using the side of my marker will help me color it a lot quicker. Now, one more thing I want to show you, and something that's going to really help a lot of you who might have trouble staying inside your lines, is to outline your picture first. And here's what I mean by outline. So let's say this triangle here, well, if I want to make sure I don't go outside the lines, I will want to draw along 
all the edges of that triangle first. And then I would color in the middle. And I like to do just stripes like this. Slowly work from top to bottom. This might seem like it takes a long time doing it that way, but it's actually faster than coloring in like this. This can take a long time. It looks a little bit messier when you're trying to color like this. It doesn't look as neat. You're more likely to go outside your lines by accident. So outline first. Use the edge of your marker and color it in stripes. And if you practice that, your coloring skills are going to get so good. All right? So I want you to color in your whole picture. And if you don't have marker, you can absolutely use crayon too. All right. So finish up your coloring and make sure to take a picture of this and post it onto our Seesaw Activity. I'll see you next week.